Hey there, ladies and gentlemen. It's me, Dr. Donna. It's time for week two of 52. Have I got a treat for you, you, you. <laughs> When I originally decided to read the book, I thought, oh my goodness, I remember Pavarotti when I was a kid watching him on the PBS episodes. Then I thought about it and I said, but what do I really know about Pavarotti other than he could sing, oh, so me. And I'm going, oh my gosh, this is amazing. I read the book. What I found the most interesting thing was that how he protected his voice among anything. He understood that his voice was an instrument and it was a gift to the world. He would go to great lengths to prepare for a role, present a role, and then interact with the audience in uncanny ways. He also wanted people to love opera from all different music backgrounds, which I thought was amazing, which is why he was so commercial. He also received a lot of flashbacks, not really flashbacks, but a lot of kind of negative publicity from other people in the opera industries that thought, well, why would you sing with Sting? And why would you sing with Bruce Springsteen? And that doesn't make any sense. You're making movies and you're adulterating this wonderful craft. But he believed that if you combined opera and rock, it would expose the world to what some believe is a music industry that could be dying. I really appreciated the fact that he, may, he maintained his purity to being a tenor, his voice, and he actually wanted more people in the world to be exposed to opera. He didn't want it to be this highfalutin, only high class people could attend such events. By putting it on PBS, by recording live, by having concerts, the world was able to appreciate opera. That's the message that I think resonated the most for me throughout the entire book. What didn't I like about the book or what do I think could have been improved? I honestly thought that the book was maybe about 35 to 40 pages too long. I got it. It's 237 pages and around about page 230, I thought, I think we understand it. I believe if it had been more succinct, then it would have flowed a lot easier. And for me, it would have left me wanting more. But by the end, I said, okay, I got it. About 37 pages too long. But overall, it was a great book. The one thing that I will say that he said is that music is universal and wherever he went to go and sing, people had the same reaction. It, was, it didn't matter if he was in China. It didn't matter if he was in Russia, wherever he went. When he performed, he performed and our hearts sang. He even performed on Miami Beach. They had to just basically renovate South Beach and there were hundreds of thousands of people that were present. Some of them couldn't even see him perform because they were so far away from the stage, but they could hear him. They actually had 100 extra police officers and it was the only time that they had an outside event where there were no arrests, there were no violence, nothing occurred. And when he was singing, sheer silence on the beach. That is the one thing that when you can use your voice to change the world, I believe that God, that's a God-given talent. He understood that. He didn't abuse it. And he used it to bring the world together, even if it was only for two hours, to watch and listen to him perform amazing music. There was one more takeaway that I took away. It was enunciating. As you all know, I am from Detroit. And honey child, I will drop an ending off of a word. He spent the first six months of singing, only singing the vowels for six months, six months. See, I just did it. I turned the TH into an F because of the importance. And he said, when you understand how to enunciate, you will sing better and you will perform better. That's what made him one of the most amazing opera singers of my lifetime. I would totally recommend this book. And the reason why is that it's not even about opera. It's about taking your God-given talent, fine-tuning it and refining it and being able to take risk. He used his voice in ways that people didn't even realize was possible. But not only that, he took risk by performing with rock stars and pop stars and in China and understanding their, their version of opera. I think that's the biggest piece is to take risk. He had a career that spanned four decades. 
And yet he still decided, I'm going to wake up and I'm going to push the limits. And I'm going to see after performing for 30 years, if I can still hit those high seats. I think that's what happens. I'm 44. People get to my age and they kind of downshift to first or second, ride it out for the rest of your life. I don't think that's necessary. I think as long as you're up and you're breathing, continuously grow, take risk. And when it's over, you go, yeah, I wrote it until the wheels fall off or fell off. I believe that's what he did. That's my time for this week, ladies and gentlemen. Before I get out of here, just remember, if it's possible for me, then it's possible for you. Watch what we do in 52. I'll see you guys next week. Adios.